Now, we've already established that next year's Penn State wrestling lineup could be even better than the one that just set historic NCAA records. But what's interesting about this upcoming lineup is that there's really only one sure spot. So let's make some predictions. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Kale Sanderson is truly going to have to play wrestling Tetris with the amount of talent that he has at his disposal for the 2024-25 season. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Now, before we get to any of it, please like and share this episode with friends and family. Help us get in front of more Penn State wrestling fans. And let me know down in the comments what you think the lineup will look like for Penn State wrestling in 2024 in the 2025 season is we're going to make some predictions here. I'm going to give you my 10 starters for this upcoming season for the Nittany Lions. We'll start at 125, go all the way through heavyweight with some surprises, some things that are going to be status quo, what everybody's anticipating here, but at 125. And we'll also talk about the options that Penn State has as well, what their options are at each weight class going forward. So 125, Braden Davis, Luke Lilladal. This is a name that needs to become familiar with everyone because he is going to be a staple in the lineup potentially a four-time NCAA champion. That is high praise for Lightning Luke. Luke Lilladal is my pick to be the starter at 125. Now, Lilladal is the real deal. He, he truly is. We already knew the, the rumors, and, and Jeff had talked about this too, that Braden Davis had a tough time pulling 125, so he's naturally going to go up to 133, maybe 141 when all said and done here. But if I had these two in a wrestle-off here, Lilladal versus Davis. I'm taking Luke Lilladal here. Zach Davis has, you know, been wrestling competitively at the collegiate level. Look what he did at Big Tens. He he wasn't an All-American, but he qualified for NCAAs. He was the number one seed. Lilladal, that all of that is true, but Lilladal is in fact the better wrestler between these two. Lilladal is aggressive. He can score. And something that Davis struggled with, at least in NCAAs. And again, this was a you know, top premier talent. I get that. But Lilladal, you need to understand the track record that Lilladal has put together. He recently defeated a three-time All-American and an NCAA runner-up, mind you, in Brandon Courtney. So the argument that's made that, well, Davis has been wrestling collegiately before Lilladal. No, Lilladal has wrestled internationally. And he's defeated grown men while he is still at considered to be, you know, right, the, of high school age. He's not wrestling at the high school level anymore. But at the 2023 Senior Nationals, he defeated a former NCAA runner up in Brandon Courtney. He placed fifth at Senior Nationals and he's qualified to participate in the Olympic trials that are going to be at the Bryce Jordan Center here in what, just a couple of weeks? Lilladal could be a four time champion. He gets into the Penn State lineup at 125 this upcoming season. That is my prediction. And Braden Davis has to move up to 133. So let's let us move up to 133. Aaron Nagal, Braden Davis, and Mason Gibson, another true freshman coming in in this talented class of 2024, are your options. My pick is Aaron Nagal. So no, Braden Davis is not at 125. He's not at 133. Nagal holds that 133 spot. And this is definitely a wrestle off spot here. I don't think, I don't even know that Lilladal and Davis even do the wrestle off. I think Davis is going to move up to 133. And then there's your wrestle off between two incumbents from the starting lineup, but only one spot at one weight class here. And I think Nagal wins. This is his weight class. This is Nagal's weight class. He is waiting for these other wrestlers to challenge him. Davis has to go to him to take this spot. Nagal's faster, already talked about aggression. Nagao is more aggressive and a little more experienced than Davis at this point. Now, neither of them qualified for All-America status here, but and, and Davis is stronger. I'll give him that. Davis is better defense. Davis is stronger. I'm not trying to come down on Braden Davis, right? As a true freshman, you won Big Tens. 
And then you were an NCAA qualifier as the number one seed. You didn't make the All-America podium, but still, that's a very, very good start to your NCAA career. But Nagao had a roller coaster of a season in 2023, 2024. Never felt like he was fully healthy, was kind of dealing with illnesses all in, on and off throughout the campaign, so he could never really truly hit his stride for the season. So if you if the circumstances allow Aaron Nagao to compete 100%, you know, no, no extracurricular circumstances here, he will remind you why he finished at fifth at the NCAAs during his redshirt freshman season when he was at Minnesota before he transferred in. Penn State wouldn't have gone out of their way to recruit him knowing what they already had committed in the likes of, you know, Braden Davis and those other recruiting classes. They wouldn't have gone and gotten a gal from the transfer portal at 133. And also, to my knowledge, Davis hasn't competed internationally or, or anything. So a redshirt actually makes sense from my point of view. Looking at everything, for Braden Davis to redshirt actually makes sense in the scheme of things given the other wrestlers who have eligibility, who's coming in. And it's not to say that there's no possibilities of Davis staying at 125. Little at all takes the red shirt. But what I'm looking at right now, Little at all is better at 125. And I think Nagao still has the advantage at 133. 141, your options are Bo Bartlett and Tyler Kasak actually moving back down from 149 to this weight class. My pick is still... Bo Bartlett. Now, Bartlett is the incumbent, and I wonder if KSAC could make weight at this point at 141. Now, that was the plan, right? That KSAC was supposed to be the 141 pound backup to Bartlett and red shirt at this weight, but then things change, right? The Shane Van Ness injury, and we'll talk about that in the 149 pound preview, you know, early predictions for this starting lineup. But I, I wonder if KSAC could make the 141 pound weight, even though he was supposed to red shirt there, but Things change, right? Obviously on the fly. Bartlett was the NCAA runner-up, losing to Jesse Mendez, right? Revenge on the mind maybe at this point. He didn't walk at senior day. If we're looking for some other evidence, he didn't walk at senior day. So does that mean that Bartlett is going to come back? Again, it's all dependent on if he decides to come back. If he does, then 141 is his spot. Until he vacates it, it's his spot. Now, if he doesn't, then you have some other situations, right? With all the parts moving around, Little Adal and then Davis. Does Nagal move up to 141, right? Things like that. Do they try to get KSAC to actually move down to 141 if Bartlett were not to come back? But my prediction is that Bartlett does come back. Revenge on the mime. He's still one, he's still the one of the best wrestlers in this 141 pound weight class. Overall, you know, right? You finish it second in, in that weight class. So it is his spot until further notice. So that one's one of the easier predictions, but again, it's all, it's a matter of if he will come back or not. Now, 149 gets really interesting. Could there be a swap, a trade between Levi Haynes and Mitchell Messenbrink? Where we're going to talk about just that coming up next on Locked On Nittany Lions. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing a lot of hats and might not have the time or the resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even quicker. 2.5 million, that is right, 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Become one of them. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? Do you ever have to turn down the volume because of all of that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24 7 streaming channel program for you each and every day, bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, and it's all streaming 24-7 
on YouTube and now on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I appreciate all the support. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts and leaving a like on this episode as we talk more about Penn State wrestling here. 149 pounds. This one, I think, is the most interesting weight class to predict for Penn State's upcoming starting lineup. Your options are the two, Shane Van Ness and Tyler Kasak, the aforementioned here. A healthy Tyler Kasak or a recovering Shane Van Ness? My pick is Kasak in that instance. But what if Van Ness is, in fact, 100%? I mean, that's what we're hoping for, right? You want to see him recover and be and be back to that potential, you know, number two wrestler and, and the way that he finished the season before. Remember, he took third place, right? So if both are at 100%, who starts? My pick is Shane Van Ness, SVN. I, I think that he would return and become that 149-pounder, but that is if he is fully healthy. I mean, this is going to be the wrestle-off of the century between the two, right? Kasak was able to do that against David Evans and then got so much better throughout the season. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But the wrestle-off of the century that we will never get to see because it is in the confines of Rec Hall's basement. But I have to go with Shane Van Ness. And, and it's a shame that we're never going to see this wrestle off to see who gets the starting spot. But before the injury, let's remember this about Van Ness. Shane Van Ness was a dog, right? The number two wrestler ranked to start the season at 149 pounds. And Shane Van Ness did the similar, not, not exactly what Tyler Kasak did this past season, but into the 2022-2023 postseason, Van Ness turned it around, finished third, almost upset Yanni Diakama Hollis out of Cornell and then went on to beat the 2024 NCAA champion in Caleb Henson. And don't forget, when they were at the All-Star Classic before Van Ness suffered the lower leg injury, he defeated Kyle Parko 5-1. to one. So this was all before the injury. Do not forget, do not sleep on the talent that is Shane Van Ness. Then there's Tyler Kasak, right? So there's all those impressive accolades in a recent memory. But Kasak, as a true freshman, right, seven consecutive wins after you get knocked out of the first round in NCAAs and you're a freshman, and that's going to shake your confidence. For most people, that will rattle you. But Kasak took that lightning in a bottle and finished all the way in bronze. And then along the way, who did he have to defeat? Oh, he didn't come up short against Ridge Lovett this time around. No, he major decisioned the number one wrestler at 149 pounds. And then to follow it up, he defeated Jackson Arrington. Right? You can't overlook either of them. Like I said, that's why it's going to be one of the most competitive wrestle offs that we'll never get to see. That's just a private Penn State wrestling practice, and only the wrestlers will be able to tell the tale here. But if Shane Van Ness is fully healthy, you redshirt KSAC. You do. It kind of like Braden Davis here. You can redshirt. You have that luxury. That is crazy to think that you have the luxury to two NCAA qualifiers, and you can redshirt them because you have the talent that you do. In this lineup, and that and that is a no-brainer. I think Kasak, with the remaining eligibility, you can get him start to get him on the international trail, get him competing. Because look at what Alex Bakundo did, right? Bakundo kind of has the blueprint for what these other wrestlers can do here. But if Shane Van Ness is not healthy, then you go with Kasak. But I'm the optimist here. I think SVN will be fully healthy and regain that 149 pound starting spot. 157, 165, these two are kind of combined together because when I when I began the show with the idea that, oh, the only sure spot is actually heavyweight. That's the only one, and that's if Greg Kirkley returns. But even 157, 165, and you're probably sitting back at Haynes and Messenbrink aren't a sure thing in the starting lineup only because they could do a switcheroo here. Let me, let me ask this. Let me just pose this real quick. Who looks more like the 157-pound wrestler? Levi Haynes or Mitchell Messenbrink? When you just you just kind of watch their matches and everything, it looks like Levi Haynes is the 165-pounder and Mitchell Messenbrink is the 157-pounder. Okay, that's that's optics. Okay, that's that's just my opinion, right? Based on based on looks. But who wrestles at what spot? does not have to do with aesthetics or anything like that. It has to do with can you compete, right? Can you hold your own at that respective weight class? So that's not to say that one wrestler belongs to the other just because I think 
Levi Haynes looks more of the part of the 165 pounder as opposed to Mitchell Messenbury. Like Davis, Haynes was not going to stay at 157. Again, that was something else that Jeff Byers discussed and mentioned that Haynes, it was tough to maintain the weight at 157. So he's going to finish at 165. So Jeff already mentioned that a swap could happen here, and I think it does. So how does Mitchell Messenbrink see this? Well, we we don't know. We can ask him about it the next time that we can interview him if this if there's a potential of that. Does he see this as a demotion? Uh, will he go down a weight class? So again, it's not like he struggled or came up far short of the 165 pound class. No, he lost barely to David Carr, former NCAA champ, two-time NCAA champ. And had he known what the score was without the riding point, I still sit back and say that Mitchell Messenbrink wins that finals match against Carr. Now, here's the crazy part about all of this. Okay, so there might be a wrestle-off at the end of the day, kind of like Van Ness and Kasak. There might be a wrestle-off between Messenbrink and Haynes. They actually could ultimately face each other at the Olympic trials in the Bryce Jordan Center. Now, that's freestyle and definitely not going to be counted towards who wrestles here and there in the collegiate starting lineup, right? But where there's smoke, there is fire. Jeff would not mention it if it wasn't a possibility. I'm going to go with Levi Haynes and Messenbrink. Do, in fact, switch. Messenbrink's your 157-pounder. Levi Haynes is your 165 starting starting wrestler at 165. So they do swap. And go to 174. Okay, your options. Carter Storacci, Alex Facundo, welcome back after winning Pan American Gold, and the true freshman Zach Ryder, who's top five overall in terms of high school wrestlers coming into the collegiate scene. There are, are a couple of scenarios here, okay, right? Facundo, as I mentioned, just won Pan Am Gold in Mexico during his redshirt senior at relatively at that weight took third place at senior nationals. And remember, he was the former 165 pound starter a season ago. But then there's Carter Storacci. And I've already made it very clear what my take is. I don't think he comes back. I don't. Is there a possibility that he can? Yes, because here's the scenario. Storacci returns, but there's a catch. Storacci has made it very clear that he doesn't want to be a student anymore. He just wants to be purely an athlete. No more student athlete. It is Carter Storacci, whether that's MMA, Olympics, right? He wants to be an athlete, no longer a Penn State student. So that's why I don't think he comes back, because he's made that very apparent anytime that you've asked him. Before the NCAA tournament, during, after, he said it all. He's been very consistent with it. But what if they find a way to have him in the starting lineup with as little schooling as possible? Is that enticing? for a fifth NCAA title run. It could be for Carter, if that's really the only thing holding him back. I think there's a, also the other part of this too, right? He knows that he's better than everybody else in, 100, in the 174-pound class. What does he prove by coming back and wrestling against people that he knows he will beat every single time, 100 times over? What is the point of that? So there's that part of it, but he's, he hasn't mentioned that specifically, even though that's in the back of his mind. He knows that, right? We know that. But he wants to train for the international circuit, right? Can possibly com- compete in mixed martial arts. So the, the idea would be that he wrestled. And this has been done before. This isn't just select two Carter Storacci's plan for a fifth NCAA title. This has been done before where you wrestle in select matches, enough matches to qualify for the NCAA postseason. And that would mean, so Karat- is, Carter Storacci is your starter for the postseason, but that would... What? What does that do to Alex Facundo to essentially be a placeholder and then Storacci takes over when you just won Pan American gold, right? We want to talk about Mitchell Messenbrink and Levi Haynes' feelings. What about Facundo here, who has clearly proven himself time and time again that he is talented enough to take that 174-pound spot once Storacci does, in fact, move on? I also want to point this out. Just keep an eye on, I know how strong and tough that Carter Storacci is. I do but you just have to keep an eye on that leg. Who knows what needs to happen, right? Surgery, rehab, is he even going to be available for a bulk of the of the season going into you know the college season when it starts in November of this year in 2024? He may have to miss a portion of it, right? Especially since he does plan to come, until someone tells me otherwise, that he is going to compete. He's qualified for the Olympic trials here 
in just a matter, you know, in a couple of weeks here. So at the end of the day, my pick is to go with the basic scenario of number one, Carter Starachi does not return to the lineup. It is Alex Facundo at 174 to take that starting spot. Now the last few, 184, 197, and heavyweight. Heavyweight's the sure thing if and when Greg Kirkfleet does decide to come back. But get ready for the Mirasola twins. Get ready for Josh Barr. What are their impacts? Well, we'll talk about that in just a moment here on Locked On Nittany Lions. And remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. Talking more than just football in the shows, we're talking wrestling, men's basketball, recruiting, and so much more. In this final segment, let's discuss the last few weight classes in Penn State's starting lineup to round out the 10, 184, 197, and heavyweight. Starting with 184, your options, Josh Barr, and I think Zach Ryder in this case. Zach Ryder, because I I don't want to discount him, insanely talented freshman, and if he's not an option at 174, I think it's likely that he redshirts here. So my pick, without further ado, right, explanation is Josh Barr. I mean, Barr is the real deal. From everything that I've heard, from everything that we've seen, this was his redshirt season this past year. And he went 15-0, and winning select tournaments, and defeated NCAA qualifiers along the way. So he is ready, and you cannot hold him back any longer. So 184 is going to be his spot. But do not look, overlook Zach Ryder. We'll probably compete in select spots at 174, 184 without burning the redshirt. So we'll get to see a little bit of Ryder. Ryder has been training with the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, too, and he has two bronze medals at World. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a wrestle-off in this instance, but I will I will go with Josh Barr, and I can't say, well, experience here because they've both been training against the same level of competition. Ryder isn't coming from the, his last year of high school competition. He, he left behind his high school so that he could come compete at the collegiate level. So just keep that in mind that Ryder is close. There's just, it is crowded at these spots here. A good problem to have for Penn State, right? The depth, the depth is important in this case, as we saw, right, at 149 this past season. 197 gets a little interesting here, and this is why I want to talk about the Mirasula twins, specifically Connor. And I think in this case, you know, Josh Barr, if you do move some people around, Josh Barr factors into this, but I think my pick is at 184. So really, this is about Lucas Cochran and Connor Mirasula. My pick is Connor Mirasula. Yes, this isn't even a bold take. It's not even a bold take. Mirasola is wrestling at the Olympic trials. A true freshman is in the Olympic trials. He took fourth at senior nationals. He defeated former NCAA champ, former Penn State wrestler, Max Dean, nine to six. Cochran has the veteran experience, right? He had a very good season, but like Luke Lillidal, I fully believe that Connor Mirasola has a chance to be a four-time NCAA champion. Cochran is good in his own right. 11-2 and two last season. The only two losses came to Michael Beard, go figure, former Penn State wrestler, and then went to, and transferred to, to Lehigh. And then Jacob Cardenas, who is a you know, former Cornell wrestler, now a Michigan Wolverine with his grad transfer. Penn State could opt and say, you know, Cale Sanderson could sit down with Mirasola and say, hey, Take the red shirt because Lucas Cochran, you know, is as good. And I do believe that Cochran is all America caliber. I do think he finishes in the top eight, but we're talking about a next level here. We're talking about a next level and Mirasula, Connor Mirasula is just that. So if you're asking me who wins in a wrestle off, you know, okay, you could talk about a long-term plan with Mirasula, but a wrestle off happening, going into the start of the regular season for 2024, Mirasula would defeat Cochran and take that 197 spot. And we finished with heavyweight, heavyweight. You know, we'll save the best for last year because it's the most security, the most certainty here. If and when Greg Kirkfleet does decide to come back, I think that he does because Penn State doesn't really have a lot of options at heavyweight. AJ Friccioni is the only one that's listed, you know, as the 197 slash 285 there, but there's not a true heavyweight on this team. Doesn't mean that Penn State can't go into the transfer portal. And that's another part of this, too. All these predictions are coming before Penn State even makes any moves with the portal. But from certainty, it's Greg Kirkfleet when he announces that he's going to come back. That's his spot. It's his, it's his spot, and he'll go for another title run here. And Penn State, if he does not come back, 
might have to explore other options in the transfer portal. So there's Cole Mirasola, right? Maybe they try to do that. I think Connor takes that 197 spot because he's just that good. But there's Cole Mirasola. We saw Lucas Cochran wrestle up at 285 and picked up a win, right? Against a top 10 wrestler at Rus against Rutgers Slavikowski. We remember that one talk and just going through him. What, what an emphatic win that was. But both of them are unproven at that weight. Cochran's not a natural heavyweight wrestler. And Cole Mirasola, if that's the plan for him, he certainly has to register. You do not because both of these wrestlers have been competing at or around 197 pounds. So this is 285, right? You're going to throw both of them into the fire. Sure, I think they could they could gain 20 to 30 pounds in between all of this, but that's still giving up a significant amount of weight if you decide to do that since they aren't naturally the heavyweight. You could turn them into heavyweights. That's going to take some time. So for Cole Mirasola, needs the true redshirt season to fully develop and then get into the starting lineup at heavyweight, and then alongside his brother, who's going to wrestle at 197 there. That's a significant weight increase as it is, and then you're giving up all that weight. So Greg Kirkfleet, do everything you can in your pitch to get him to return, and I think he will, or you have to turn to the portal. So it's Kirkfleet or go to the transfer portal. So here, once again, are my predictions for the 2024-25 Penn State Wrestling starting lineup. 125, Luke Lilladal, 133, Aaron Nagal, 141, Bo Bartlett, 149, Shane Van Ness, if fully healthy, if not Tyler Kasak, 157, Mitchell Messenbrink switches with Levi Haynes, who is going to be the starter at 165, 174, Alex Facundo, 184, Josh Barr, 197, Connor Mirasula, and 285, Greg Kirkley. And that'll do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lions. Thank you, each and every one of you, for checking out this episode. And if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoy these conversations around your favorite sports, particularly Penn State wrestling in this case, and let me know in the comments if I'm spot on with my projected starting lineup this early in the offseason or if there are some changes I need to make. Let me know in the comments. And for more content around your favorite Penn State sports teams, keep it right here on Locked On Nittany Lions. Once again, thanks for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. Don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on the free Fire TV channels app, courtesy of Amazon Fire TV. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today now available on YouTube and the free Fire TV channels app.